So I wanted to have you over because you have a very interesting district and a, an interesting person in your district. One of the neoliberal centrist darlings, Maxine Waters is in your district, right? Auntie Maxie. <laughs> Auntie Maxie, exactly. So that, that's district 43. That's your okay. 43. Um, so what, I know you were a Bernie delegate. Tell me more about your experience in Philly. Well, my experience in Philly was basically confirming a lot of the things that I would talk about with people. You know, everybody always talk about how I was a conspiracy theorist and how I wear a tin hat. And yeah, I'm very proud that I was a conspiracy theorist and I wore a tin hat because when I went to Philly, I ended up proving all my conspiracies and my tin hat got removed and now I put it on you guys. Because you know, if you don't believe us, when we were there front row and we saw the things that we saw and we try to live stream as much as we can without it yeah. getting blocked, um, then, then you know who you're gonna be, keep believing the media that that gets paid to to portray some news. Right now we're live streaming. It's impossible to edit this conversation right now. But in, in the news, you you have to wait till eleven o'clock to get this broadcast, and you'll get the sound bites, and they only put in what they want you to hear. So a lot of the truth that happens, and a lot of the issues, and a lot of the the stuff that that exposes them, is not what you get to see on the news. So when they're you know when I get off the plane and they're telling me that we lost. And we still have even voted yeah. at a contested convention, and you know, and it sounded so scripted. Everybody was, was scripted, and they even called them out on that. But uh, they would end the conversation every time, We're like, "Well, you don't want Trump," and they wipe their tears. You don't want Trump, right? Like, you know, Bernie yeah. lost, and like we haven't voted. You have the opportunity to crossing over, and and being the heroes of a revolution that we fought so hard to build. You can take all the credit. I don't care. Because it, it's going to benefit all of us, mm -hmm. and, you know, and, and they would kind of start seeing that you know, like none of you guys are working like we are for Hillary. If you guys can gain ten percent of our following, you guys would destroy Trump. But you guys can't even gain one percent of our following, so you guys are going to lose to him. And and it happened. We were right. Yeah, and mm -hmm. we're we're right again right now because if they don't get their ass together and, and they don't stop fighting progressives, they're going to lose again. And they think it's it's a it's a joke. It seems like they're not learning, right? Well, that these Democrats. I, I think what's happened is it's gone so sloppy and you know, the rigging is it's 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 already obvious at this point. So what they're doing is uh, the party is actually hosting two parties within mm -hmm. one. Mm -hmm. So it's totally undem undemocratic for one. It's totally uh, a sham too because they're ma making them believe that they're all progressive. Only half the party is progressive at this point. When you got all these people taking money and they're all in bed with corporations. There's nothing progressive about it. You know, even if they only took one small donation, at that point, unless you can outbid that one small donation, which is usually not that small, we would have to <laughs> all put in on it to, to, to be able to compete. You can't afford him no more. He doesn't work for you no more. He, oh, we'll push him. Once he's in, we can push him. If you have to push anybody to the left side, they were originally not left to begin with, if you have to push them. And, and if you're pushing them left, what makes you trust that they will? You know, like why? Why would they turn on their beliefs so firmly just uh, to to honor yours? So, so you, you gotta start fighting for the people that are left from the start, that are not taking the money from the start, that they're refusing the money even after. And, mm -hmm. and once they get in, they don't start doing this. Because once they start doing this, because it's already happening with other so-called burners that we we help get elected. That you know, they, they, I don't know, they get starstruck or they get compromised, but they're taking money. And that's not the burner philosophy, you know. Um, also, like the fact that um, I want to know why you're running as a green because you were a Democrat before. Mm -hmm. So why are you running as a green now? Well, I'm a life. I was a lifetime Democrat until I went to Philly, and it wasn't something I was extremely proud of. Obviously, we don't have much to be proud of right. enough right now. But um, it, it was a lesser of two evils. It's always been, and and then you know, even though I always say, well, what's wrong with the other parties? How come the other parties never get a chance? But if you try to give them a chance, that means the other party's gonna win. And it's always it's always yeah. this fiasco. So so I, I decided to run as a green because I, after what I saw in Philly, I'll be damned if I can look into my uncle's eyes who jumped out of planes in Vietnam and tell him that hey, our votes don't count. You know, everything that you know, you're lucky to be alive today, your two buddies that got shot dead while you were parachuting down in Nam, you know, they died in vain. And I refuse to have to look at them and say, No, you know, I don't want those votes to count. So when I tell people I, I don't care if Bernie loses. You know that that's that's democracy if you lose this, but I'm pissed that my vote didn't count. Cause now people are losing lives over votes that are not being counted. Bernie would have won. 
We know or, or you know what I mean, or he won. He, he won you he know won. what what I mean? It's like it's like it's one thing to, and it's not trying to like you know stick stick a giant needle on a sore old wound, but it's just kind of like we we need to make sure people are understand the fact that this system is rigged. Mm -hmm. Um, democracy was cheated here in California. They called it for Hillary before people's votes were even counted. They the, were giving provisional ballots. The same I with mean, the most electoral votes, right? Yeah. You know, and, and it never comes down to our state. Like by the time it comes to our state, we have the most electoral votes, but by the time the voting process comes to our state, it's already called. Yeah. You know, or it comes down to Idaho with four electoral votes. How how is it how is it like a, a small state determine the election of a country when, when you have a state that has forty billion people and, and that and in a state that has six electoral votes can, can determine, you know, like uh 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 the the outcome of an election, so something so big. So how how does Idaho have so much power when they don't even have that much population? <laughs> so the system is rigged, the political um People in power are corrupt. They get bought up by money and corporate interests. So how do you fight that? How are you going to combat that um, with the Green Party, who constantly gets ragged on, who constantly gets blamed for Russia? I mean, how many times was Jill Stein blamed for Russia? And all they have is one picture, that, uh, <laughs> and she was assigned the seat, and she's not even making eye contact with the guy in the picture. So, yeah. so I mean, and every time they, they bring it up, it's to kind of throw the media off of something they're doing. If you, if you realize it, all of a sudden that picture yeah. you know, it emerges out of, out of nowhere from the left, and it's the biggest story on the news, but the biggest story on the news should be like these kids that we can't find, you know, the, the immigration just uh, so you know, now we're finding out that they're being sold on human trafficking, and it's not the first administration to do it. Just, this is why I tell people, I, I don't even know what the difference between a Republican or a Democrat anymore, even when they wear their colors. Because, you know, one will say one thing and do the other, and the other will do the uh, opposite thing and say, and say one thing, too. So uh, yeah, I think people are even having trouble distinguishing them now at this point. Uh, even, like uh, most of the Democrats here, I, 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 you can tell me they're all Republicans. I, I wouldn't know the difference. Rendon, uh, Garcetti, <laughs> Garcetti, Villagosa, uh, you know, all these guys, Kevin De Leon, like, you know, like, like I, I, I mean... You know, I, I, I feel hey, that... but he's a progressive, Kevin DeLeon. He, he, he can be <laughs> turned progressive, and that's that's the problem I have. He, see, Rendon, he was a single-payer advocate his whole career, but the minute they gave him the money, he shelves it. We have to follow what politicians do, not what they say, because right. anyone can say anything. Right, and, you know, he's a great talker. I mean, his message is amazing. Like, you know, he, he has the delivery. Like, mm -hmm. he, he, he has the, the, the presence, the delivery. He's being molded to be a possible anybody but Bernie candidate. Because that's what the Democratic Party is running right now, too. Okay. They're running anybody, but they got Bernie. Dumb. They don't know the solution to Trump, and, and it's sitting on their lap, it's right? It's right there. And, but but they also realize that they can't let him go, because then that, that, that'd be the end of the party. You know, whoever's still fighting in there, it, it, it's just that this is why I try to tell people, like, Bernie did everything he could possibly do. Like, his, his highest peak of his, his revolution has happened. He woke the masses up, and we can't depend on him. We're being very selfish by depending on Bernie Sanders to do it all at this point or to just keep leading or, or whatever he does must go because whatever he does is compromised right now. You know, he he knows damn well Russia didn't rig this election, but he has to speak that so he can get a main stage on CNN or a main stage on all these other news networks so he can spend two hours talking about issues. But later on, on, on the news that everybody else really watches, you get the sound bites of, oh, if Bernie says it's Russia, it has to be. Yeah. Come on, come People on, Bernie. People hold these you know. politicians up to a super high regard, and like they don't understand, first of all, that it is politics. They don't understand that Bernie didn't sell people out. Mm -hmm. He simply did what he could to gain the most power, and now we have people that are winning congressional seats as democratic socialists or winning as independents. Our revolution has endorsed uh, a, a Peace and Freedom Party member. Our revolution uh, has endorsed independence. Democratic Socialists. I mean, his whole slogan was not me, us. Yes. It was never, I'm going to be President Bernie and you have to do what I say. It was never about him. It was right. about passing the torch on to everyone else, planting the seeds so the seeds could go up and then flourish there. And, and I currently have an unpopular opinion right now about Bernie that you know I was about to talk about too. Sure. You know, And I love him. I love him. And I'm so grateful because thanks to him, I met you and, uh, and thousands of others that are, are actually making you know progress and doing the, the, the work. Uh, my, my small bone pick, to pick is like, I don't know if he's aware, but I think he's pretty smart. He's a, he's a political yeah. uh, uh, chess genius, you know? Yeah. So uh, this this weekend, 
he's rallying all over the place. He's got like three different rallies on one, on the last Saturday before our elections, right? Our elections. Mm-hmm. This is the last Saturday we could go out, mm-hmm. and, and and everybody's so excited to go see Bernie. They, they put everything on hold, yeah. right? And, and you know, and that's fine. He, he he's setting up for the Disney workers and stuff. But my problem with this is that he asked us to join a revolution, and here we are, and we're fighting for him, right? And <coughs> no candidate is going to be sharing any one of the stages that Saturday. And one of the, you know, one of the pre- pre-disclosures are not to allow a candidate if they want to host Bernie. So, I mean, this is where, you know, there's the compromise. So I don't think it's Bernie's exact fault. You know, he, no, may it's even, he might not even be aware of it, yeah. or it's his compromise to still have the little power he has in the party. But we joined the revolution, it was us, you know, not me. And here we are, and now it's basically, you know, oh, yeah, thanks for, thanks for joining. Good luck. Yeah, I have a good time out there. But right? I think what candidates can do, and a lot of candidates are doing, is they're um, going to get tables there. And I, I yeah. you know, and like, because there's so many progressives there, and there's so many people that aren't really involved in politics that I personally know many people aren't really that political, mm-hmm. but they kind of want to know what's going on mm-hmm. and they want to vote. Mm-hmm. So I think we can reach those people. Um, people like you can reach those people if you go to those events and, it is kind of like all coming together and it's a really stressful time for you guys because it's Tuesday and Tuesday's it and then that's it. And I think that you also have to be realistic and not too hard on yourself because the fact is we know it's going to take a long time. This isn't an overnight thing. And I think also California is very, was even more divided, was even more mm-hmm. like, well, who should we vote for? We have three progressives running, um, two awesome particular ones, mm-hmm. but three progressives running for, the same Senate seat when they all could have ran for different states and won each seat and mm-hmm. we wouldn't have to be doing this. Like we need to sit down and have a conversation and talk about, okay, this person's good for this seat. This person's good for that. Why don't we all form a coalition? And that's why I love Gail McLaughlin because she understands that. Mm-hmm. And that's why so many people from any party across the board have endorsed her, including uh, Ralph Nader himself, which yeah. is kind of funny. Yeah. You know, and, and, and like, like exactly what I say, I, I'm the one that took a little heat for time by the Turquoise Coalition. But look, with the Turquoise, thanks to the Turquoise Coalition, I'm still in this race, basically, mm-hmm. because my, my goal was I never separated from the Bernie family. They're still my family. I still love them. And, and, and a lot of the support is underground. Right. You know, because a lot of these people are in the party. They can't openly endorse. And this is another yeah. thing that I think that is I hate. Not, I hate that. It's not under. That's why I don't want to be a delegate. I can't it's openly not democratic. endorse. Like, you know, you know, like. My thing is, okay, you you know, the Democratic Party is, oh, the, those electoral votes, we got to get rid of them. Okay, well, you may not be able to do it without the Republican help. But you know what you can do as a Democrat is eliminate the superdelegates and, and lead as an example. But you refuse to do it because you still want to have that, that finger on the scale. You know, because that little finger on the scale is all you have left to even try close to beating us. Because in less than six months, most of those people that yearn to be a delegate for Bernie became monsters and we actually became better at their game than they were. And that's why they don't, they, they can't stop this phenomenon. And I continue to, you know, see my decision to run as a green, first of all, is because I was so disgusted by the mm-hmm. way the party treated me and I have friends and family that fought wars and it, you know, and, and to me it's a total disgrace. Like, I don't even want to fix the party because, you know, if they're willing to laugh and, 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 you know, and just literally put these, these veterans under the rug, then, you know, the, why, why do they even deserve it? Like, you know, that's why my idea was to build the party. I still support 110% the reform. We got to still overflow. We have to do both. We got to do both. So that's why the Torquoise Coalition, it's not me trying to form another party or anything like that. It's it's what I refer to when the Democrats and the Greens work together on, on a cause or to get a, a, yes. a, a, a candidate elected. Like, when I first announced that I was running for Congress, it was in my secret ring group. You know, mm-hmm. it's a pretty good group. So yeah. everybody, right away, we were already kind of celebrating yeah. within the group. Well, my next day, my announcement was, we, we, we still have the secret uh, Bernie delegates of California group. Mm-hmm. That's where I made my second announcement there secretly. And I said, hey, I'm running against Maxine. I'm running as a green. I'm letting you guys know because I don't know if you guys are planning on running a burner or not, but I'm still a burner. Exactly. And I'm running as a green. So you guys can either run, you know, we could, you know, if we didn't learn anything from Carmona and Kenneth, we can either go at it again and just start explaining that. But the reaction on there is like, hey, nobody run anybody against Miguel. And this is, my, I mean, probably a year ago, you know, and they did it. And eventually, they did. It, you know, it sticks because that's how things work. And I think it's absolutely intelligent. And people are like, why would you run as a green? You have no chance. Well, 
as a Democrat, he doesn't have a chance because okay. Maxine Waters has a hold on the entire establishment. Same thing with Tim Canova and Debbie Wasserman Schultz. I made the point to them. I said, look, you can run a burner against Maxine, but we all know it's career suicide. You know, you guys are already telling me it's career suicide running as a green, but I'm not in it for a career. Yeah. You know, I'm on, I'm in it because I actually live in that district. I'm suffering from her 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 judgment calls. I'm suffering from her voting. You know, uh, she's passed five bills in 29 years, and passing bills are not easy to do. But in 29 years, she's passed five, and most of them are irrelevant. She changed the names of yeah. a post office. How many homeless <laughs> got fed with that? You know, how fast did the mail come in? Mm -hmm. You know, it didn't do anything, not even for the post office. You know, uh, she she built a, a replica of a, of a wall of a, a memorial in Gardena. Mm -hmm. So she's a wall builder. So it's Trump. You know what I mean? So like, I, I, you know, none of that stuff, you know, you know, that's nice. It's, it's, it's cool. But how much money got spent on the wall? And how much of it got pocketed by the city? That's what, that's the real thing I want to know. Because you know I mean, if you get a mind man, you make a big old deal about it. It's probably because something came out yeah. of it. Right. Um, I'm trying to talk about stopping the homeless situation. We have 70% homeless. And then now we have an NFL stadium that's coming into our, our, our house we should not, first of all, we should not go to that stadium. We should let that stadium rot in debt because they are silencing our freedom of speech. One, you know, that they, yeah. they obviously don't have a problem with, with uh, police killing people or their own players beating up their wives or their own players having dog fights because they all get welcome right back to the league. And, and to me, I, I love football. I grew up playing in high school. I was part of the CIS championship team and I was a small guy on the team, so I never got the the honest chance. Like I've always been yeah. an underdog. So <laughs> me being an underdog is nothing new to me. Everybody ever thought was bigger than me. You know? I'm not a fighter, but you know, that's why I'm not scared to fight big people. Or, or you know, whether it's physically or, yeah, or, or metaphorically. Yeah. yeah. So so I, I was getting into the Secret Service. So to me, we, we were treating them like like rent cops at in, in Philly because we were so upset and mad. We didn't care. We didn't care. We put it all on the line. But you got the NFL coming into our district, making billions of dollars. And yet the average income in our district, the median income is $49.1,000. We also have SpaceX, which makes billions of dollars in, in, in um, profits. And the Torrance Refinery, I think, reported $40 billion in profit last year. Profit. How is it that the whole district that surrounds all these major, major companies are making all this money can only allow the, 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 the living area to make 49000 because we don't got those jobs. Right. Right. And... That was the average. You know who's placing below average? The blacks and the browns. We're, we're, we're like $7,500 uh, $7, below the average income in our city. But guess who the two top populations in our district are? The Latinos are almost twice as much as the blacks, but we are the top two you know, population in the district. So we're the ones that are getting dealt the worst cards, but yet we have the voting power. We have the voting block. If we mm -hmm. combine our power, and, and, and got together and this is you know one of the things that i want to bring up we, we have a strategy right now that can actually put me in top two and okay. eliminate every single republican in the race so what can a green do you can outsmart the system any way you can with three thirty four hundred dollars raised my opponents are almost all raised a hundred thousand dollars or more but all of a sudden I, i'm making noise i'm making uh steps to actually throw in a block where omar navarro who's being uh, endorsed by joe apario uh, he went all over the country raising money from all these Republicans, and he raised three hundred thousand dollars. But I don't think he's ever shaken the hand of any of the constituents in my district because all I see is a bunch of bus stops with his name on it, bunch of signs everywhere, you know. And all I see is Omar Navarro on them. He doesn't say he's Republican. He doesn't say that he's endorsed by Joe Arpaio. He doesn't say that Trump supports him. He, did, you know, his last rally was at the Trump Terranaya Resort, and it was one hundred twenty-five dollars to get in. Or 250 for VIP, and that's it. VIP included a picture with Omar. Oh, that's exciting! <laughs> you know, I, we, can, we can take a picture with me right now for free. You know, I'm like, okay, you know, okay. I, I would love to take a you know, be, 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 come on. She 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 she'll make the picture look a lot better than I will anyway. But but my, the point being is to get money. To get money, he went to Hollows Verdes. That's not in my district, but that, that is the rich community of the district. And I'm pretty sure that they, they don't stand Maxine in that area either. So her his whole proposal is that he's better than Maxine. I'm waiting for a proposal to prove it. You know, because at this point, he, his, his whole strategy is a Democratic strategy. Look at the other guys. That's their whole strategy right now. I, the, I mean, they're just playing that game. So I think what independents and Greens and whatever the outside party is can do 
is ignore that and do your thing yeah. behind the scenes. That's how we have to do it. We just got in the first, uh, you know, totals for the mail-in votes. And uh, the, the, the Democrats have, you know, it doesn't mean that the Democrats voted for Maxine, but I mean, you know, she's the only Democrat in the race. And I hope some of those voted for me too, but 90, over 90,000 mail-ins have already gone to the Democratic Party and around 20,000 have gone to the Republicans. There's 35,000 or 33,000 NPP. But with these numbers, Maxine's already in. Yeah. You know, like she doesn't even need any more votes. She, you know, she, she at this point is, is top two. Everybody's dreading Omar Navarro. Well, if you really want to eliminate him at this point and every Republican in the race, even if you even if you support Maxine, you can vote for me. Right. Because you, you'll be protecting Maxine at the same time. Because now you, you, you know, because if Omar wins, here's what most people don't, you know, Maxine, everybody thinks Maxine is going to smash Omar, you know. But, the, but, but most people don't realize is that a lot of these fascists, a lot of these races didn't vote before, but Trump won. So now they're empowered and now they're coming out of the closet. So this is a statistic that people are, you know, how could Trump win? Oh my God! He, yes, there is that many evil people it's in America that will vote for him. You know, see, racism has always been around. It's just been on, 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 on kind of a, a of a check. You know, you still see, you know, a, a bit of volcanic eruptions here and there. But it, it, you know, as far as we know, it's been under control. But it's not because if you're a Latino, if you're a black, you know, like us, you, you experience it. You know, not every day, but you experience it. I, I, you know, if I shave my head and I was to drive out of here, I get pulled over three times on the way home. Guaranteed, because it happened to me when I was younger and I shaved my head. I got pulled over out of the barber shop and I got pulled over four times that week. That week, all every single time they had to let me go because I just looked. You know, I just looked the the, the you know. If yeah. I shave my head, I'm Latina and I got thick eyebrows, and then I have this <laughs> from from squinting so much. So it looks like I'm always mad dogging. Even if I'm smiling, it looks like I'm mad dogging. I'm not a mean person. It's just that it's I do this to read, to read. <laughs> so when I when I don't have my glasses, that that, that caused the the, the the brow look. But but yeah, it, it got me pulled over four times to the point where all the cops in the area basically knew I was. And it would be like, like, vote like, for me. Oh, he, he looks weird, but he's cool. <laughs> he's cool, man, you know? But but this is me growing up younger. But this is some of the experiences that I thought, you know, I've been pulled over plenty of times. Ramps, my whole car ransacked. It's not like they put it back away for you, but they found nothing. They wanted to find something, <laughs> but they had nothing. So, 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 so that's the thing. Like, we, we experienced that. You know, most of the time the privilege is out there, and, and, and you know, I'm so grateful for the people that actually recognize their privilege and are fighting along with us, and you know, and to have the compassion. Because my whole campaign leads with love and compassion. Right? Republicans are allowed to come to my table. We, you know, we don't have to get along with 80 percent of the platform, but but we can get along as people, and and that's why you know. You know, I have a lot of cordial debate with Republicans. Like, you know what? I, I don't like 90% of your platform, but I appreciate what you're doing because, you know, instead of saying F you Trump and this yeah. and that, you're actually doing something about, you know, uh, resisting Trump. I mean, not just uh, screaming hot air. Yeah, you know? not just wearing a t shirt or writing a hashtag resistance. And I call yeah. it the McResistance, McResistance too because it's just like, <laughs> it's bullshit. And yes. we all know that. And it's sad because the liberal left, the liberal left, is are the ones that, you know, the moment someone talks to a Trump supporter or a Republican, they're like, oh, you, you're supporting a fascist. Oh, you're doing this. It's like, no, 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 no. How did we get here? We got here because we didn't talk to each other. We got here because we made assumptions about each other and we ignored a lot of the poverty that was also affecting white people. Poor white people are affected by this poverty. And it's not just... Um, black and brown people. And so ignoring the Democratic Party, who said they're the party of the working class, completely ignored them. Hillary didn't even go to a uh, campaign in the yeah, most poorest places. Like she wasn't even in Michigan. She just it completely ignored all these places. And then they're surprised that Donald Trump won. The majority of these people voted for him because they wanted a change. They felt like it was, you know, the economy is rigged, the same thing we all feel. They felt like, hey, maybe this guy will make something different because I'm white. I don't have to worry about all the other he, shit he he's says. A businessman. So, yeah, he's, he's a, a businessman. businessman. He's not a Clinton, you know? <laughs> and it's like, you have to understand that so you can understand that it can happen again. Yeah, yeah I mean, and, and, and that's why I say, like, if Omar Navarro makes a runoff, 
it's, it's going to be a lot tighter than people think, you know, people, and, and there's a lot of people that are already crossing over to Omar just because they can't stand uh, Maxine. And a lot of these people yeah. are black because I'm talking to the community. They're like, oh, I'm going to vote for Omar because I can't stand her. She's making money off of us and our poverty. And like, well, well, dude, Omar is going to do the same thing or not worse. You know, like, at least give me, well, what do you got? You know, and I said, like, yeah, but you only raised $3,000. You're not viable. But you want to take money out of politics, don't you? Well, you know, it's, exactly. e it's easier for me to say, hey, AT and T, you want to get those? You want to get that net neutrality going on? Like, you know, I'm right here for you. You know, come on, boom! And all of a sudden, you see me on every damn bus stop, and you see me, you know, on TV, and you see, and all, oh, all of a sudden, I'm viable. Well, I'm lying to you the whole time just because I had enough money to buy your thoughts. You know, and this is this is what's going on. Um, if, if, if these uh. If you see a lot of these candidates all over TV, don't trust them already. You know they got too much money to be doing. You know how much commercials cost. You know, like look look at the Super Lance. Bowl. Super Bowl will we'll, we'll, we'll make enough money for for ten years to live on. You know, just off, off a few commercials. And and the thing is, how are we ever going to get money out of politics and these corporations from influencing our politics mm -hmm. if we continuously vote for people who look good and who have advertisements and who are corporate candidates like it's never going to happen you need to be the change like if you want money out of politics stop voting for corporate politicians oh this guy won't win why grassroots campaigns and let's talk about this grassroots campaigns run a completely different campaign and they need to if they're not running a completely different campaign than a, a regular centrist corporate funded campaign because it's not about the money that these candidates are raising it's not that the money isn't important it's not that you shouldn't donate to Miguel, it's not that he doesn't need the money. It's more of like, hey, his opponents can raise money like that. That's not what he's running on. He's running on the issues. He's running on what he can provide as a person. And that's another thing like, um, uh, well, I'm, re I'm ready to be an actual victim of the district, so I know the, the district's pain. You know it's a district. I've been served admission notices. I've been gentrified. All all within Bernie's, you know, from from me being a Bernie delegate till now, this has happened to me. Um, I, I I've been working. It'll be 23 years, June 16th in, in, at Costco, right? So this not only just shows my commitment to help people because I, I work sales, but I'm not a, a commission salesperson. So you should see people are like. Yeah, oh, well, do you make commission? Because I don't, no, no, I don't, like, wow, like, you broke it down, like, you're, I'm here to help, I'm here to help, so most of my regular members, they always come back to me, because they trust me, you know, they, they, they see my reputation with them, they see how, how I am willing to help, even if it's just electronics, and, you know, but imagine putting me this kind of dedication, and this kind of loyalty, because, trust me, working for, for 23 years for Costco, when they get a thousand applications a week, a week, they can't go through all these applications, wow. that's how easily replaceable I am, and why wouldn't they want to put two people in place of me for the pay, you know, because yeah, sure, it's not two people, but they'll save enough money, like maybe three or four people will, 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 will cover, you know, one of my, my salaries, right? So so, so that's, that's the whole thing there. Like, um, I, I take that experience of, of me being loyal, my, me, my willingness to help, my, my caring, uh, and, and my, my cordial. I'm real cordial with everybody. Uh, and I take that experience into politics because politics doesn't have love and compassion. Politics is not cordial. They're real dirty. They'll, they'll smear you any chance they get. They'll, they'll ruin you. They'll ruin you. And you know, and I and I give up my average life. I used to watch Dodger games all the time. I have no idea what's going on with the Dodgers anymore. Uh, you know, Lakers football. Yeah, you know, I, I was all about that life. You know, and it's so much easier. That life is so much easier. I will admit. It is. It's ignorant it, bliss. It's, it's, it's you know, <laughs> it's, it's it's. I mean, like I said, I love football, but. Right now, I'm so disgusted with, with, with the, what the NFL is doing because the NFL has an opportunity of, 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 of taking someone and, and, and just giving them a life that most people will never experience. So that that's real genuine, and it should be something that there should be, um, uh, you know, like an opportunity that's golden. So when someone comes in there and they actually make it to the NFL because so many kids don't, that probably are better than some of the kids that do, um, you know, and and then they and they just totally blast out the, the opportunity, and they just you know they, they, they get caught in the crime, they do this and that, whatever, and they're still giving it a second chance when there's so many other guys that deserve the opportunity. I don't think they deserve a second chance. You had your chance. You made the millions of dollars. You, you know, you and, and you and you took it for granted, and now you're in trouble. No, you should no longer belong in the NFL. The NFL should be prestigious. But you know, at this point, and, it just shows how they're more like. Now I don't know why they call it the pink skin because the football's not even made out of pig skin 
it's their skin that's pig. That's a good quote. <laughs> and also just the fact that they think that they can silence dissenting voices um, and, you know, silence a player for kneeling, for kneeling for lives of thousands of men of color who have been shot and, and women who have been shot, you know, un, un, unfairly by the police, by law enforcement. We have a huge problem with police brutality. We've had a problem with police brutality too. And it's just kind of like empowered now. There's also cameras and and it's like the NFL should be there to set things right because so many people watch football. So many, it's such an American sport. And the fact that they're instead putting out a Nazi-like kind of, oh, you must stand for the flag, the Pledge of Allegiance. That's not freedom. That's actually, it's actually tyranny. Mm -hmm. And I think we need to be very, very careful and if if you've watched football before, I highly recommend like boycott the NFL. Boycott and you it. really it really doesn't stand for American values. And like you were saying, we're having stadiums be built here while there's people in the streets who don't have a home, while there's you know condos that are empty that are worth millions of dollars that people can't afford because investors buy them out and they build them and the people are on the streets and right outside of them. That is how ridiculous this society has become. In the same was, you know, the, the point you're making there that I was actually going to touch upon, um, admitted domain took place. So they bought a lot of the area around there because the NFL doesn't like hoods around their, their stadiums. They want to keep this clean image around their stadiums, you know, so similar to Disney places, right? So so, um, so the admitted domain, I mean, you know, and then I found out, you know, because I thought, well, at least those people got taken care of, you know, the, you know. But then I'm hearing some horrendous stories too, where they kind of basically got a bad end on the uh, of the deal too. Mm -hmm. Like they, you know, they they probably could have got more value for the houses mm -hmm. than was given by them in the domain, and they're not gonna try to pay the the, the top value for the houses anyway. They they just it's all business for them, but at least they got sympathy for the house, right? But the problem is that most of the people that own those homes, they don't live in them. Yeah. The renters. That, that that's a highly rented area. You know, Inglewood and and, and Compton and you know uh, what else is in that Lenox. Uh, the, the, the whole section over there. And now not all that area got got hit with it, but it's gonna get hit because now all those people are without homes. We got a seventy percent increase in homeless, and I bet you next year is gonna be a hundred because of this. And and nobody cares. Oh, it could get to the company because oh the shelter's too close to my home. I'll have to walk it by the shelter. Bad. It, you have to you rather walk by and over and around tilts the tents with the, the feces smell and all this stuff all over people you know that that's okay with you then actually putting them in a in a, in a shelter where they can at least keep clean and you know like oh you know the I, humanity I, seems to have been lost and that's mm -hmm. also part of this um system right at the end of the day capitalism is not working mm -hmm. it's it's actually not working also because it's rampant capitalism we live in an oligarchy we live in a system that puts profits over people we we don't care how much it costs someone to get their medicine here when it costs like cents dollars in canada or mexico or any other country and and we still think we live in a first world country we really don't we really, really I, don't. I, I call it a fourth world country now because most most of the time the third world country it, the the economy is just so bad you know like they don't have the resources and you know they're forced into to, to the to that to that kind of standard but we have that we have, <laughs> yeah. we have resources we have money we have you know and, and we choose to make more uh, uh you know we have an immigration problem we really do i i i, I you know i'm the first one to admit that we do have it i'm a green party candidate and everything but it's not a, an illegal one no it's a legal immigration problem because these people were born in this country and they're immigrants they have nowhere to go. They're they're running around in yeah. our country, and now and now, now what? We're gonna build a wall around them? I mean, what's going on? What what is going on? Like let, let's be let's 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 just be real. And most people don't even look at the number of people. You know, they they, they always want to pump up the number of people coming into the country, but they never talk about the number coming out. And it's basically the median. Yeah. You know, it's almost a dead even. Like as many people, a lot of people are just fleeing America now. You know, because it's, it's because it's <laughs> because you know we're causing immigrants here in our own country. So yeah, we'll probably leave it to a third world country where we can probably afford to live in it now. And that's that's what's happening. That's the reality. California pays the highest taxes. You know, I would love to be able to break that tax break. I think that comes to the assemblies and the senators. So, but I would definitely push it and, and you know and, and and have the conversation with them that they need they need to cut our our, our state tax. We need a progressive uh, tax. Reform. So you, you need to cut the state tax. We need to get guaranteed job programs through MMT, which is, you know, what they refer to as bailout. A bailout is basically the definition of MMT. When we build out the banks, 
they said that our social security all oh, we weren't gonna have because they were taking the money you know, that was bs if, if that was the truth with the money they got we wouldn't have social security right now most of the money is not even printed anymore yes, S- yes. Si- 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 crypto the, the cryptocurrency it's not something that just came out recently that the millennials came up with. The millennials are trying to figure out how, how they could get their piece of it. That's where the Bitcoin comes in. Bitcoin is not the answer or whatever, but it, I think it is opening the door because what they're realizing is that the dollar was given the value. Mm-hmm. It's just a piece of paper. You know, it can burn it. You can have a thousand dollars right here and it can burn it right out of you. And now what are you doing? <laughs> you know, like yeah. now you're short a thousand dollars and you're, and you're, you're hurt, you're, you're feeling pain. And it's paper. Yeah. But but that's the value that's been given. You know, people will do some crazy stuff for that paper now, right? Well, the cryptocurrency, it didn't start with Bitcoin. It started with paper checks. That was the first cryptocurrency when we started writing checks out and giving them out. That wasn't cash dollar. Mm-hmm. That, that was the first. Then came the credit card. And so now we're swiping. Mm-hmm. That's crypto. Now we're chipping. Crypto, right? Yeah. Now we're swiping. You know, we, we, we just run our phone over it. All cryptocurrencies. Yeah. Venmo, okay. so, everything. So the idea was given to the millennials, and the millennials are trying to steal the idea and take away the value. Because what happens if the millennials come up and say, your LG remote right here is worth God knows what, right? <laughs> and your money is worth this pen, right? Now, the only thing you have a value is that mansion, the, you know, the, the Ferrari, the, you know, all that stuff. I'll give you this remote because you need to eat. You know, you're gonna have to train me a Ferrari or something, but here, I'll give you a bit, I'll give you this remote mm-hmm. and you can buy you can keep your stuff and buy yourself another one. Because that's what's gonna happen. And then uh, uh, all those money that's being stored in all these other countries, it's useless. They can have it. Like that well what, what that's what they're in fear of. That's why they don't yeah. allow that conversation to explode anymore. Like you don't see you don't see it on main media. No, no. Just like for instance, Cody. The, the the TV uh uh the, the 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 app where you can download all the movies and everything for free and all that you know, uh-huh. um the gray zones there is that you're stealing a web signal you know so you know there's no laws against that the only, the only time you'll be breaking the law is if you download it and you have a you know you committed a privacy because now you have a hard copy right so as long as you it's, it's just like if if you have the pay per view and I'm walking down the sidewalk and I'm watching your pay per view. I'm allowed to see it unless you close the curtain or same, you know, or, or maybe there's a peeping tumble. But that's, <laughs> yeah. the, but that's something else. But 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 it's the same thing. So why do you think Fox 11 hasn't blown it up? Oh, Fox News, you know, Cody, da da. Because Fox News depends on on the ratings that you watch through the television. They get the ratings as you watch them. And those are going down too. They're going down because everybody's watching everything on Cody, which I I would recommend everybody go get a Cody until they find a way to stop that. We got to keep bending the rules that they they break all the time, and they don't. And, and obviously, Hillary Clinton is walking around a free woman. She caused election fraud. Election fraud. That that's that's a felony. So when people tell me, "Oh, you need to get over it," da, 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 we got an election coming up. You should be. I, I am concentrating on the election, and how am I supposed to win it if they're rigging it? So we can't get over it until heads are rolling. Nobody's nobody's under arrest. No, there's no other you know prosecutions going on. You know the, the the case of Florida has been dragged. Yeah, Debbie so, Wasserman Schultz should be so, stripped so, from her position. So so there. why am I not stopping the conversation on election fraud? Because it still exists. Simple. Fix the problem and I'll shut up. <laughs> I, 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 you know what? I talk a lot, but there's a lot to talk about. Uh, you know, I was saying that there's a lot of repealing we got to do. You know, at the last yeah. at the at the last speech, I said, and everybody started laughing. You know, I said we have to repeal Costa Hawkins. You know, uh, for God, Citizens United. You know, but we also got to do a lot of introducing because just because we take these things out, we need to come out with, with programs and systems that are actually going to work and that are better yeah. than the, and, and that they won't be able to manipulate and control and use them to their advantage again. My pre-finance home loan. You know, that, that's one of those yeah. things too. Uh, if you're a middle class, you're a working person, that you know, you're making money, but you're struggling. You know, you're barely on the check to check. You're, you're in debt and you have bad credit. The chances of you buying a home are a big fat Obama. Oh, right. So, so, uh, what what if we do a program where the same banks we were talking about that we bailed out after they spent all the profit that they made with these predatory loans, taking over these houses that they, they foreclosed on? What if I write write, write a bill that twenty percent of those homes fall into this program? So it's not a complete government takeover. And actually, I kind of I kind of buy myself on the tongue too doing this because I'm going to give these banks a lot more business that, that they deserve. You know, I'd rather put them in jail. But but whatever we got to make the plan enticing so they can actually work with it. So it, it, even if it, it's gonna give them some love, 
I, it's all about my concentration is about putting people in homes. So you know, there's a little bit of give and take there, but it, it, it's all gonna work out for everybody. So here we go. You, let's say you're in thirty thousand dollar debt, you value your situation, and you can afford a two hundred thousand dollar loan. Well, we we look around, you know, we qualify you for it, and then we find out there's a house that foreclosed in the area. You fall in love with it, and it foreclosed at one hundred thirty thousand dollars, but it's worth two hundred thousand. Right. Well, you have a thirty thousand dollar in debt. We throw it in there. You're at one hundred sixty thousand dollars, right? That's amazing. Right. And we do a closing cost of ten, twelve thousand dollars, and we cap it, so they can't abuse the program either. And we leave thirty thousand dollars worth of equity. You know, which you can afford that, but 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 we leave, we leave it in there. Well, well, you know, why are we waiting? No, well, we'll get back to the rewarding later. Um, this is to protect the bank. This is to protect the bank because the bank, we're, all we're asking the bank to do is their job, loan money, to loan the money. So if we can put, prove that people have steady income and we can put all their debt into a house and put this person in the house, the first thing that goes up is the moral value, which is the most important thing, to, you know, in a happy society. And then the credit score, right? Now, let's say you mess up and you get lazy. You know, we gave you a house, we did everything for you, and you want us to pay for it. Well, that is not going to happen. So if you don't make your payment, three months later, you get foreclosed. I'm sorry. I did all I could. You, you, I mean, I'm doing all the work here. You know, all you have to do is pay your bills, right? You know, you didn't do your part. So you're going to lose your home. I'm sorry. And there's only so much we can do. And the bank is not in the, in the business of buying people homes. So you lose your home. But remember the $30,000 of equity? That bank will no, I mean, that house will no longer qualify into the prefinance home loan, but they can sell it and still make $30,000 profit and, and cover the whole cost. Now, let's backtrack. You make your payments. You're, you're a good homeowner. It's, it's hard to do. Yeah, so especially in this economy. So I want to make sure that this program comes with a, 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 almost like a program to help people and, you know, sh show them how to gain value out of their homes. Show them how to use the value in their homes. You know, show them how to buy another home if they have to, you know family member whatever or for business you know whatever it is but um now you can actually have a house to, to open up a business because you usually have to have a home to open up a business they, they want something give and take so we put you in there you make your payments and you know everything's going well guess what all your creditors got paid in full that never happens it usually goes into collections collections uh they they, they bargain that out with you but Insurance covers the loss and they only make a percentage of, you know, that's why the interest is so high. That's yeah. why everything is so expensive. So so they get paid in full. Uh, the bank, two years down the line, you already have a little bit of equity and you're going to have more as you pay. And, it's you know, your value probably go up. Now you have enough equity to refinance. So this is a very economically viable solution. It's, it's something bank. that you're still taking the banks into consideration. So the banks can't even complain because I wouldn't even take the banks into consideration, to be honest. But, but that's but, awesome. But we had to. We yeah. had to, you know, in order to make it enticing, we had to. So 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 there you go. So now the banks get paid in full, mm -hmm. right? Which never happens, right? Mm -hmm. So so everybody wins. Now, as you're making payments, the bank still makes more money. They don't just make money off the closing costs. Half of the, your mortgage. It goes to interest. You know, most people don't realize this. In the 30-year plan, you don't start paying for the house until the 14th to the 16th year, unless you know some of the other tricks that I can also share with you. But no, that, that's because I actually used to do loans. So why did I develop this amazing idea? How do I know it will work? I've, I've introduced this idea to economists, and I introduced it to, to uh, real estate. And man, real estate can't wait to have it because the sales are going to be so easy. The commissions are not going to be so high. But they're going to have so many of them, they're, they're probably going to so be making more. more, and they're not going to be worried about having to make a house sale a month or two just in order to survive next month or whatever, right? Because, you know, so now what happens is instead of shifting renters to homeless, we're shifting renters to homeowners, right? And we're raising the value up together as a whole. So this is also part of where I talk about homeless prevention, which nobody's talking about. Homeless prevention is how you stop the bleeding. Then you treat the wound. Right now, there's an artery. We're just right treating the, the There's wound. an artery in the, in this five feet of blood just shooting everywhere, and there's homeless people all over the street. But everybody just, you know, you know, we, we give a dollar and we don't, we can't afford it. But we're the ones that give. Right. So the people that actually care is because we're we're that far. I um, mean, we're that close to maybe being the next person out there paddling. So so that's why we even though we don't have it, sometimes we so choose to give because that could be us one day. Right. We understand yeah. it. But the people that have the money, the people that cause the homeless, they drive up the freeway ramp and they roll the window up on them. When they should be the ones giving them five or ten dollars every freaking day, because they're probably 
part of the major reason why they're there. Yeah. No, a hundred percent. And also, I've also heard about other theories where you can buy people's like the the government can buy people's loans. And yeah, Kevin, the, the, yeah, Kevin, Kevin said that. That's an awesome idea because you know, um, wh who was it? John Oliver was the one that bought that bought for sixty grand, bought millions of dollars in in debt in American debt. And it's ridiculous how these people profit off of indebted people that are never going to be able to pay it back, and they're never going to be able to come back from that and they're not going to be productive members of society and if they're not productive members of society then we have an economy that isn't really producing and it's stagnant and that's what we have right now we have everything in front of us to be successful but we're just not using it the best part about my pre-finance loan is when when i have to introduce it to a republican because after i'm done, <laughs> after I'm done i go look we don't raise taxes and guess who's paying for it all we are we are so this is not us wanting free stuff you know, this is not us wanting the pie and the, you know, no, we want our slice of the pie, but you guys are, you know, you guys are acting like we can't even look at the pie. And that's the problem. Yeah. That is a problem. Because first of all, the pie was never yours to begin with, you know? And, and when Trump goes around talking about, oh, the Mexicans, they brought the worst people, the rapists and the thieves and all that. I honestly thought that I was reading my history books when, when the Nina, the Pita and the Santa Maria arrived, because that exactly sounded like, who he was describing just came across our borders. Because I'm not saying that everybody's holy, and I'm not saying that they never raped anybody, they never killed anybody, but try going to a Batman premiere here. Try going to pray at a church here. You know, try sending your kids to school with the peace of mind anymore. That's all American made. That That's made in America. That's made in the good old USA. You know, because this land was stolen, and it was taken away very very brutally and, and they Bye brought and, 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 and they brought slaves over here and oh i just saw the latest video we we got someone else we got to make a, a racist famous i think we, we should hashtag that racist famous <laughs> because you, you <laughs> i think this is right now the, the my most favorite phenomenon right now because like i said since we leave 11 compassion throwing my rachis and barbecues i guess these races have been the most <laughs> I, mean, I, I, I always get a tear of joy when i watch it because it's, it's just so amazing everybody having a good time bashing racism we should send yeah any, the next racism. races gets taco trucks and we make it a party <laughs> yeah. well, we well, love tacos well, here today a white lady was going off. well i saw the video today but a, a white lady was going off on the land uh son and mom because uh, they were talking spanish not even with them she's like oh you're making some spanish and then someone else started recording she's like oh why don't you go back to spain and i was like oh my god <laughs> oh my god seriously some of these people think America started in America. Like history started right here in Pennsylvania. Yeah. That that's you know, there's no dinosaurs, there's no <laughs> caiman, there's nothing before Pennsylvania in the first 13 states. I don't, I don't know. I don't know how literally a white lady just said that you know, go back to Spain where they speak Spanish. <laughs> like that's where you came from. It's like the conquistadors. Some, a black person to go back to Africa. Like if, 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 okay, if you want to speak Spanish only, try giving directions in. I mean, if you want to speak English only, you, you wouldn't be able to give directions on, on anywhere in the country almost. You got Arizona, Los Angeles, San Pedro. Those are all Spanish names. So, you know, don't tell me not to speak Spanish because then, you, you know, <laughs> I mean. Why is learning a language looked or having the ability to speak multiple languages looked as derogatory in America, whereas in other countries they speak three and four different languages and they're like, yeah, we speak, you know. <laughs> well, it's one of the reasons why Apple is so, 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 such a big thing because Apple takes away a lot of your options. You know, people don't like to think, they don't like, you know, they want everything done for them at this point. Yeah. They have a, a device that they don't care if they're getting spied on anymore. In the middle of the house, <laughs> turn on my TV, <laughs> cancel my phone, <laughs> feed me. Oh, wait. Oh, man, when are they going to start making this thing to feed me already? You yeah. know, like, and it's just... It's like Wally. It, it's terrible. It's really yeah. terrible. And, and, I, and I was one of the last people on Facebook, even though I'm one of the, you know, now I've found a, 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 a reason to right. use it. But I was one of the last ones to join because... I was telling people like Facebook is a reason for you not to come to visit me no more. Facebook is is a, a is a is a way that we're being separated and we say hi to each other over digital waves now. And Which I, is why it's so cool when you meet people from the internet in yeah. person and you're like, oh hi. Because you feel like you know, them, you know, them, yeah. you know, like you do. it can be good. It can you be can used for good. Social media can be used for good, and it can be especially right now with the younger generations, millennial generation Z. Um, everyone is getting access to this information through 
social media. There's a lot media. of pros. There's a lot of pros. There's a lot of cons. So, but but, yeah. but the reason why I was really last one is because like, like you won't come and visit me no more. Like it's so much. It's easier to say hi on, on the messenger. For, yeah. You know, and and, you, and I'm and I'm sure a lot of you will agree with me on this one. Like, you know, how, how many times did, that has your your best buddy even come over in the last week when it used to be maybe like three or four times a week? So so it, it's really uh, this country is based on divide. And it's not just through race. It's 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 through status. It, it, it's it's through what what gang are you from? It, it's are you a Democrat? Are you a Republican? Are you green? It, it, I mean, they gave us a social security number from the beginning, but people are still trying to hide from them. But nobody knows who they are. You know, we, they're the ones hiding because nobody can actually give us. I mean, we have a, a couple of names we get throw out there. Koch brothers, like you know, we, we there's some people we know, Rockefellers, yeah. you know, but but but. Who are, we just know them by their last name because it's a family of them. Mm-hmm. Like which ones in the family are actually good? You know, might be, no, might be, you know, not, 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 not every tree is filled with bad apples or yeah. Like, yeah. Every now and then you get a nice shiny green one, but but, but that that's the whole thing. Like the divide is there, and, and, and unless we come together, that's how they win. Yep. That's how they win. They 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 even found out that they had to divide their own party just to keep the power in their party because there's so many people out there that are actually playing by the party rules, doing everything the party's asking them to and do, still. and still losing, and mm-hmm. still, you know, they're not getting treated democratically. So to me, it's the most hypocritical party of all, and you know, I call them the hypocrites. And, 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 <laughs> and, the, and the Republicans, I call the we dumb again. Because you know how dumb they are this time? They swear that Trump is the best Republican they ever had, a lifetime Democrat. It's the best Republican <laughs> they ever had. So we dumb again. Uh, this is, it just seems like a bad reality show gone wrong. <laughs> America season nine coming up. Like, that's I, just, I love the Twilight Zone, but man, this is, this would have been the Twilight Zone that wouldn't have made it, uh, you know, it, it wouldn't have made the It, it would have been the plot and, and, yeah. and, and, you know, that was it. No, this is too, this is too disheartening to watch. Yeah. <laughs> and I, I can't watch it. So I just wanted to end with um, some last thoughts on um, what are you going to bring to the people in the 43rd district? Like, what are you going to uh, bring for them and where they can find more information on you? And yeah, just why should they vote well, for you? Well, people say I'm offering Disneyland because I have all these crazy proposals. They all sound amazing and everything. But I've explained it before. You know, I can't I can show up with one or two proposals that are like phenomenal, the best proposals of all time. But if they shut them down, then I have nothing. So I'd rather throw as many darts at the at the dartboard as I can, because if one lands, then we all win. Um, uh, the other thing is, I want to. I, I recommend anybody to adapt my my campaign. You know, anything that you see that you like out of mine, it, it's yours. Now, I don't care what district you're running in, because the, the idea is to get it to work for all of us. Uh, I don't. I don't want. It's not a selfish type run. Uh, it, it's it's very unselfless actually. Like I, I've done a lot of things that I, I could have been concentrating on my own campaign for, but I thought needed more attention. You know, like the Compton water issue, that, that that was something I had to go, you know, put put my campaign aside and go go help them. And all I did was give them my resources. I'm not the leader of that movement or anything. I just gave them all my resources. I said I built, I worked really hard to be where I'm at. I built, I built, I got relationships. They're yours. Do what you got to do. Let's get you clean water. That that's all I did there. But um, right now in, in District 43, we have an opportunity that a green is going to eliminate all the Republicans in the race and step into the top two, which is historic. Uh, Londo has never had a congressional uh, candidate. I, I, I'm a 30-year-old uh, veteran of Londo. So, so you know, when I talk to them and, and, and them, they're, they're excited about me. It, it's pretty neat. Uh, so if, if even if you're a Maxine supporter, you can vote for me and help her out right now by making sure that you don't get Omar Navarro in the race. And that will help us all out, actually. Because uh, you know, in the end, I would probably rather have Maxine and, and Omar definitely. So, so I'm, but I don't want any one of those two to to represent us no more. Because neither one of them have. I'm just a person, but I'm prepared to do a politician's job. And the reason why I don't want to be a politician, even if if I do get elected, I, I said refer to me as an evolutionary revolutionary, because I want to represent the people. I, I'm going to be beholden to the people. I'm going to stay. You know, even if none of my proposals get through. And even if um, uh, everything I, I you know uh, I voted for you know doesn't go or every, anything I voted against does, you're gonna realize that my vote, you know, was uh, always to put a heart in the machine. So it's gonna be in favor of the people, and, and that's that's my that's where I come from. 
I already know the problems. I already know where to go and where not to go to 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 resolve them. And I just want to make a run for it. And the, and the only thing I ask too is if I, if I do make it to the top two, I just want one debate. With my, if I if I can if I can help Maxine out by taking out all the Republicans, then you guys can help me out by actually challenging her and, and making her answer the questions that she refuses to 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 get at. You know, she won't debate me. I guarantee you, she won't debate me. And then you know what? And if the race starts to turn on her and people start getting more excited about me, you know, coming into November, then if she comes to me and asks me for a debate. I'll give her the same respect she gave every single person that she ever ran against and tell her no, unless my constituents want me to, because I will do what the constituents want me to, not what she wants. And that's where I'm at. You know, I love you. I leave with love and compassion. Let's put this heart in the machine already. My 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 but my, my slates, Kenny Mejia, Angelica Zanias, and and um and Rodolfo Cortez Baragan. We have opportunity of representing 2.8 million Angelinos, and we are the trendsetters. You know, uh, the marijuana legalization started in California, and we're one of the last ones to get it done because, you know, the same people that say they represent us oppose us continuously, continuously, continuously. Uh, the other thing that may happen too is if, if I get into the top two, the Republicans are not going to vote for Maxine. So it, this race could get very, very interesting between me and Maxine at that point. You know, and, and then if a lot of Democrats start liking what I what they hear from me, I can I can win a lot of them over. All it takes is for me to get out there and talk. I'm Colombo. Like you know, my presence is not that of a politician, but that's exactly what I'm striving for. I'm not. I don't want to be a politician. I don't want to be in bed with corporations. I don't want to vote against the people. I am a person, and that's what I intend to stay. Uh, I do this for my children and your children. Omar says he's fighting for your family, but he's actually fighting for your family to get deported. That, that's, that's what the science should actually say. So once again, uh, June 5th, come out and support me, District 43. We, 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 we got a real progressive challenger. Uh, I've, I've been fighting. Uh, it's, it's all I do and is you've fight. been endorsed by our revolution, uh, Costa Mesa. Costa Mesa, uh, SL, uh, SEV. San Fernando. S South Bay LA Greens South. is actually uh, endorsed by our revolution too. So my, my, my organization, nice. Extreme Greens, is endorsed. Um, I've been endorsed by L Latinos Progresivos. Uh, there's a few endorsements. Uh, more, more keep popping up. This last two weeks is when all of a sudden everybody's like, "Oh no, we got to get this guy in." And I'm like, "Oh, where were you guys two months ago?" But it's okay. It's okay because we don't always win our first race. But I, I'm trying real hard to win this one. And um, it, and if I don't, I, I, I'll have more options coming in. You know, I'm, I already, I'm, I'm already working on Plan Bs, but I'm concentrating like like hell on this Plan A because there's this little window opportunity that that I would speak of. Even when I started the race, I said, you know, everything I explained that, you know, that could happen is happening right now. I just didn't know how I would make it happen, but it, it happened to fall on my lap. Now it's all on you. It's all on you. Don't, don't be discouraged that I didn't raise all the money. I, I've raised, I've raised the, 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 the uh, uh, people to wake up, you know, pe pe people are waking up through me. People are realizing that Maxine isn't what she's cracked out to do. It doesn't do. cost you anything to vote. And it's not about the money. It's not about what he's raised. It's about what he stands for and what he's going to do. And that's what people, progressives who, who say they're progressive, need to pay attention to more than the funding. Yeah. And um, thank you for being here, Miguel. Yeah, and I, I really appreciate you taking time to explain everything. Mm -hmm. Once again, June 5th, and he's a Green Party candidate for the 43rd District, running against Maxine Waters. He has a shot to get in the top two. And if he gets in the top two, then from there, it's going to be a party. Yeah, so. it's, it'll, be, it'll, be, it'll be really <laughs> interesting, you know. I mean, my senior will have to actually think twice, even if she wins, if she wants to run again. My, my whole idea is to at least cripple her and, and you know, and let this be her last her last term if she wins. But let, let, let this be her last term by, by not letting her in. <laughs> and one, one more thing. She keeps screaming, impeach 45, impeach 45. I can do it too. Impeach 45. But I would probably, <laughs> I would probably back that up with the article of impeachment. Because I know she, she can show us the money. But I dare anyone to ask her to show you the impeachment papers or how many of the ones that have been written she's endorsed. Because I don't know how that train is going to go anywhere. No, it's not something we should be focused on either. It's false hope. You know, yeah. my, my, my district is, is tired of false hope. We need a real challenger, uh, someone that, who's not beholden to either party. Someone okay. someone is going to call them both out. Let's get progressives in. We can <laughs> we can vote people out. People uh, have been winning seats. Pennsylvania was, was awesome. 
Um, Georgia four, was four, awesome. Four, four, four out of four Greens won in Philly. And, and, and that's amazing. People think that the Green Party can't win. Um, you're wrong. They can if they have the support. And if we are strategically running candidates like Miguel, and we're not running other burners or other Dems against them. That's what it is about. We need to come together, form coalitions, form solutions, and no matter what the party is, move forward as an army against the establishment. Oh, and, I, and I can prove that Joe got more than 3% of the vote. I can easily prove it. Um, before Bernie got rigged, the Green Party historically had only made it on 28 ballots in our cause. So that's 28 states that allowed you to vote for the Green Party. After Bernie got rigged, we made it on 48 states and Nevada cheated them out of 49. So I think that pretty much, uh, you know, why would we fight so hard to put on a ballot and not vote for it? So that alone, that, that, that jump, you know, of 20 states more is a lot more than 3%, you know? And I basically feel like I know the whole 3% personally when I talk to everybody, because everybody I talk to voted for Joe Stein out here. And then when I tell them to confirm their vote, they get a really nice surprise when they realize they don't even exist. <laughs> well, thank you so much. And uh, thanks for watching guys. And we'll discuss in the comments. Bye guys. Bye.